Welcome to another video by Veros Technology. Today we're going to talk about word and text alignment and how to how to get your text to look the way that you need it to look in a paragraph. I've taken and pulled a paragraph from a, a document on the history of one of my ancestors here. And so in this paragraph, it's just regular Times New Roman, and it's left at the defaults that are in the system, okay? And what I want to do today is to look at those defaults and show you what these defaults mean for your text. Because a lot of times these defaults don't conform with what your instructors may want if you're writing for your papers at the university or a college. And when you hand them in, the the instructor is probably going to want them to be double spaced. And in spite of the fact that there's good spacing between these lines, they're not double spaced. So what I want to do is show you how to get them to where they look the way they're supposed to. So if I click this arrow here, it brings up my paragraph dialog box. And my paragraph dialog box is where I adjust the spacing and everything that goes on in a paragraph. So you'll see that the general alignment is left here. Now left just means that it's going to be along this left margin. Now there are also a little bit more controls over here in this paragraph ribbon item where you can center the text. Notice how it moved each line to the center. You can right justify the text. Now that's the opposite of the left justify where it throws it all the way to the left versus throwing it to the right. And then a lot of books, like you get uh, paperback books in the store, a lot of fiction books will what, do what they call justify the text. They put a little bit of extra spacing in the text so that the right hand and left hand margins are straight up and down with, with the only exception being the last line of a paragraph. So I'm going to put this back on left and I'm going to go ahead and end and get back into my paragraph dialog box because the next thing you need to know is if they want you to indent the first line. For example, if you're using APA format or MLA format for your reports in, in school, they'll want you to indent that first line. Well, how do you do that? Well, you have this indentation here, and here you have first line indentation under special, and it'll be by a half an inch. And if I go ahead and click OK, you'll notice now that my first line of this paragraph has now indented. And so the ch I've changed this particular paragraph. Now this has not changed it for the entire document. It will go back to the way it was as soon as I go to the next paragraph. So let's go back to our dialog box here. The next thing we want to consider is the spacing before and after. Now, spacing before and after in these two dialog boxes here, in these little two little uh, boxes is measured in points, just like the size of a font. And the measurement here says that after this paragraph, I'm going to include an extra 10 points. Well, so this is why you see this extra space in the gray here. This extra space in the gray here is giving extra space between that last line of the previous paragraph before it starts the first line of the next paragraph. And notice my line spacing here is one and a half lines. Now, if I want to have true double spacing, like it says in APA formatting or MLA formatting, I would take away this after points and put set that to zero. And I would then go over here and say that I want my lines double spaced. Now, if I click OK, you'll notice now that the lines have moved a little farther apart Instead of one and a half spacing, they are now double spaced. And notice the last line here doesn't have anything extra under it. So you'll see that this last line has about the same amount of spacing as this line that's a little bit longer here. And you can see that they're about equal. So what happens is from paragraph to paragraph, you have a true double space between the last line and the first line of the next paragraph. Okay. 
So let's go over here. Now, one thing you'll notice is that you do get a little bit of a preview down here that kind of gives you a little bit of an, an idea what is going to happen after you click OK. And now I'm going to go show you what happens with the lines and page breaks over here. Now, on this page, you've got a little thing on pagination. For instructors that get really picky about papers that you hand in, they're going to want a, a bit of widow and orphan control. A widow is a line of a paragraph that is left on a previous page without the rest of the paragraph with it. So you end up with one line at the bottom of a page and the rest of the paragraph on the next page. What pagination widow and orphan control does is it makes sure that you have at least two lines in each place. So an orphan is exactly the opposite. You'll get to the end of a paragraph and one line will want to go to the next page. What this does, it'll take and push two lines to the next page or it will force the single line to the next page to join with the rest of the paragraph. So you have at least two lines of a paragraph at the end of a page or at the beginning of the next page, at least two lines of that paragraph showing, okay? Now, your pagination can get even stricter with keep with next, meaning you have to keep the entire paragraph together or keep the lines together or put a page break after every paragraph. Then you can use formatting exceptions. You can suppress line numbers like in a legal paper. You can suppress line numbers for a section for a particular paragraph and then continue those line numbers later. Or you could tell it don't hyphenate any words that are too long and they break at the end of, a, end of a line. You can tell it to do that. What you can do after you've set all of these things is notice this set as default button. You can say, hey, I want to keep this the way I want every document done. And so I'm going to set it default. So my normal dot dotx, which is your normal template that always opens when you first open Word, you can set it as default in that normal template. You can also save your document as a template. And later on, I'll show you in a, and in a video later how to create a new template like for an APA format or an MLA format. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you'll come back for more. See ya.